Hey guys, Brian from Ambi Characters, and today I'm taking you back memory lanes. So basically, I wanted everybody knows NBK for the scaleless corns because we're definitely ahead in the project, basically worldwide, and we've had some amazing things. But you know what? There's always a reason why we got into a certain project. And I'm gonna take you guys back to Daytona, probably 10 years ago. So like Daytona 2011. Uh, I was down there, it was amazing. So, but before I get there, I'm gonna show you guys where it all began. But make sure you guys subscribe if you wanna see some awesome content. Okay, guys, you guys, I always brought it up. Anyway, like this video, comment on this video. Let me know what is your favorite scaleless corn? What mutation from the anery, the albino, the snow, whatever it is, let me know what it is because they're so different. I want you guys to let me know down in the comment below what your favorite scaleless mutation is and from that point on we'll make some videos up but it's a waste of no time let's get back right onto it so guys it all started with a scaleless anery corn snake now okay i'm gonna keep the snake during this whole video because this is actually one of my favorite snakes out of my whole collection and the reason why i'm showing this to you is because i'm actually retiring this girl this year but that is one of the rare ones that even though I'm retiring this girl, um, I'm gonna keep her all my life. Well, pretty much all her life because my life probably gonna be much longer or- uh, Hopefully. <laughs> pretty much, probably. So yeah, so basically, why is it that I fell in love with scaleless corn snake? So back then, back at Daytona, I was, I was a kid. I was probably like in my early 20s walking around and I saw from Brian Bartchuk a just a regular scaleless corn snake. He had a, he had his booth in the middle of the booth. He had a big like square acrylic and he had an awesome regular scaleless corn. And I was just amazed. I was amazed at how much the contrast of the, of the animal was without the scales and just made it so cool. But at $7,500 US for a corn snake, when corn snakes were being sold at like 20, 30 bucks, I was like, there's no way we're investing from there. But from that point on, I went like on a rampage of going to shows around a little bit around the world. And I ended up going to the Hamburg show in Ham, well, the, basically the Ham show um, in Germany. And that's where I met Reptilis. So Stefan and Nicola back then, it was actually like definitely eye catching because we're both like French from us being from Quebec, them from France. We definitely click right off the bat. And they were basically the source where all the scaleless corns came from, which was really, really cool. But then from the, what I seen at BHB Reptiles to what they had on their table there, it was crazy. So from that point on, we spent a few dozen, a few dozen thousands of dollars. I mean, I ended up like this girl here was about $2,500. So we ended up spending about maybe like twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars on buying like a bunch of different animals. I I always love to like invest and not spend like a huge amount of money on just one snake. We've done that, but for us, it's never really worked out. We've always done a lot better uh, for again for MBK as more of a volume production because like I I create systems and then we create like our production and then we always have a little bit more success. So not all the egg, all the same eggs on the, in the same basket. But so basically we ended up buying some OKT, some some this annery and all that. And then from that point on, I had seen only babies, but I bought like a bunch, a bunch of them that were like maybe like, a, like maybe six months old or a year old. I just bought them off the list, right? I didn't even buy them like from looking at them, but I knew I was gonna be amazed. So when I ended up getting it, getting the shipment, that snake, is basically what killed it. I could not understand how this snake was like purple and blue. It was just amazing. I mean, the eyes are like, the eyes are blue, uh, all the purple coloration. And I mean, like as babies, they're like almost blue. And I, I mean, I was always told like, how is like a, a blue snake, you know, like, okay, we, we see them in, in like in some, vipers or like some even like some green tree pythons you'll have like those blue tints or purple but i mean i could never understand that and i mean Nuram, my father was breeding reptiles like back 
in our basement. I was born in those and I've seen anery corn snakes all my life. And when I see a snake that is basically like this and you remove the scales and it looks like this, that's insane. I mean, it doesn't even look like the same snake. Like that purple and the blue, where does it come from? It just makes no sense, right? So I mean, they're never gonna behave. Some sort of like powder blue inside of the saddles. Yeah, it's like, it might be it might be a little bit hard to see on the... Uh, it looks grayish on the camera, but in, in real life, it really looks like blue flakes. And I mean, like, that's where it, it, it really, really started for me. You know, so like by looking at those two snakes, and I mean, these are two females that I have, and I mean, it just makes no sense for me whatsoever that they basically have different coloration on scales and on skin which is basically two different layers which is just mind-blowing and i mean from that point on we realized that there's even pattern difference so you had animals that have these normal saddles but you remove the scales and then the pattern is like aberrant which is just simply stunning you know so i mean guys that's really a little bit of where it all began for me. And I mean, why is it that we ended up going into the whole scaleless project? And the reason being is that one, they mesmerized me. But on top of that, all my life as a reptile hobbyist, I've been convincing people to basically beat their fear of snakes primarily. And a lot of times people will come up to beat me and be, you know, like, I, I'm afraid the snake's gonna be, it's, it's very like, is it gonna be slimy? Is it gonna be, it feels cold, whatnot. And I can't make someone touch a scaled snake if they're afraid of that. But the second that I told them that the snake actually feels like your own skin, it basically just opened up their mind saying that, okay, maybe if I just feel it, it'll feel like something that I might be like familiar with. And the only reaction that I got from people that were afraid of snakes was wow wow this was not how i expected it and i have been able to do educational shows and convince so many people to beat their fear because of those scaleless animals and that's what's really amazing now real hobbyists people that really like animals <laughs> like that really like their snakes with scales don't like them as much because it just feels weird because we love how they are with the, with the scales but i mean nonetheless like there's some snakes for everybody and that's what the beauty is about those things so i mean guys there's so many awesome animals and i hope that these little stories like you if you like stories like that we got i got a ton of stories i got a ton of awesome <laughs> experience stories but we have a lot of awesome crazy stories and a lot of funny stories about a lot of people that probably don't want people don't want these things to get out don't go there probably don't probably go there at this point but you know what that's just how we are that's what we do i mean we're so passionate about what we do and i mean i hope that you guys are able to get you know things like that you know so i mean guys just appreciate every little thing that you can that you can notice you know go to shows enjoy these beautiful animals i mean these this this has been a work in progress you know this project for over 10 years and i'm going to be taking this project to every to the end to the, to the end that i can and i think that i'll never be able to just like fulfill this point you know so don't give up on your projects from when we got these animals back like 2010 the first original scalus was produced in 1999 so all I can say is like you ball python breeders that have scaleless, like don't give up on a dream because it took 10 years before a dream of corn snakes to happen. And I mean, ball pythons produce like probably 25% of what corn snakes produce. Ten. So give it 40 years, 50 years, we will see more scaleless animals in this industry. They're so amazing. We'll get to the quality and the lineage. And until then, I just love sharing all my passion with you guys, sharing those stories. And I mean, this beautiful scaleless anery corn snake is simply stunning. I mean, what? A purple and a blue snake. How can you beat that? No stress, guys. Enjoy.